my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and I'm finally getting around to doing this, so let's do this. So a viewer, uh, very uh, nice of them to send me in, and there's bits of crap everywhere, sent me in uh, the same tech forks that are used on the Harley Davidson Sportster project that Dell's doing. And I was wrong, I said that all of these gubbins will have nothing in it. There we go, hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> so... Let's have a quick look at the quality, a uh, lack thereof, of these shocks. So he sent me two, and the difference between the balls and this one is this has got a black spring, silver spring. There's a Schrader valve in the bottom, an aisle at the top, aisle at the bottom, which is you can screw it and stick another spacer in if you so wish to desire. We have a uh, locking ring for the preload, and then, well, we have the ring the adjustment ring and then the locking ring on top of that um, and then that's it basically so we're going to quickly run through what this is and then we're going to talk a bit about the construction design so on and so on so this is basically a piston right so there's a piston in there good night out that cylinder piston right and then basically what we do is we fill this with oil right so it's like a hydraulic cylinder if you want to think about it that way and you can see that that fits in inside there right so this is your this is your damping rod assembly right inside there and you have your spring um so people might call this a progressive spring if you if you like um there is only one progressive bit really you have these coils and then these coils so you'd call this a twin rate spring the progressive bit is this bit in the middle when it transitions from one bit to another it doesn't squish this first or this first what happens is is both get squished just at different rates right um basically just because of how the how the material likes to deform this bit here is much easier to perform, basically because of the angle, right? You've got not much of a steep angle. This is a much steeper angle. If you see the more, the stiffest springs on Earth, the angle is really quite steep, if you get what I mean. So if you think of horizontal and you think of the angle, the steeper the angle, so the less coils for the same length, the stiffer the spring. It's all for the same wire gauge, right? For the same thickness of coil of the wire that was used to make the spring. There is slight differences, obviously, with the material as well. Um, you know, harder materials tend to deflect less uh, and so on and so forth, or, or require more force. But the way you can think about this system is um, it is a suspension spring, right, that makes things bounce. But the problem with that is you kangaroo everywhere, right? You just you, the springs have oscillations. The best way to show that is to have a weight on a spring, right, and you just see it bounce 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 it goes on for ages because it, it has to dissipate the energy right so to stop or basically to dissipate that energy right so you can have a squash and then back to normal what we we have is damping which is this rod and this piston and an orifice and what you would basically do is if you think about like a syringe right we have the same thing a cylinder and a piston and a rod so this and this are very akin to each other, right? And then what you do is, is that I can only, I can only squash that so quick, right? So imagine between there and here, I have a spring, right? So then you've got some kind of dampening. Now, if I reduce this, right, it's even, the, you know, I, could, I control the rate. If you put a valve in here, instead of using my finger, then you are basically making adjustable suspension, right? The damping rate is adjustable because you can control how much the rate, it's not just how much force, it's the rate at which it accepts that force. Now you can have it so you just blank it off and then, uh, you know what I mean? There we go, it's like, oh my God. And some earlier systems just had a gas in them. And if you just have a gas, this is all you're doing, right? Is it's just the compression rate of that gas. It's leaking, but imagine it was sealed. You can compress it, but as you compress, it gets harder and harder to compress, right? So you've got kind of like a forever damping that doesn't need any adjustment. It will leak eventually, but whatever. Um, which is basically what this thing is, right? We have this piston, right, in this cylinder. 
piston cylinder with a eye, you know, with an eyelet on the bottom, which would be this. And then this goes into this and this system. So what we're doing in instead is we're adding a pipe to this and having another cylinder, a piggyback, like there at the side. Right, that's what we're doing. So what happens is, is as this, the volume of oil in this piston, because this is the thing, with this we're using air, if we used oil and I squirted the oil out, this, I couldn't do that, even with this hole, right? It'd be, because you're trying to compress a fluid, not a gas. And it's not only that, it's the viscosity, right? The, um, the oil, the liquid has a mass, and that means it has inertia, which means it resists wanting to move, wanting to accelerate from in here out of this hole, right? So it's not just the restriction, you have air in here, or you could have oil in here. The difference with the oil is the oil doesn't want to move, right? It has a mass. It also, because it's a liquid, it has an interaction with the other molecules around it, right? So it, they're not simple atoms, they're molecules, and they want to try and push past each other and they get in each other's way and that sods everything up and the camera is fogging up and it is really 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 annoying because it is 16 degrees in here give me a second they've done studies you know 60 percent of the time it works every time right the fog is abating thank god for that massive massive pain in the ass it really does annoy me um but anyway, where was I? So, we were talking about something. <laughs> oh yes, right, so, this is what you always need to think about when you think about suspension, right? And I might even just cut this stuff off and get a little silly spring, and even get a tube and a little clear cylinder thing which I can show you. But any road, uh, then you have all this gubbins. So we know what this bit's doing, right? We have a rod with a volume of oil that we're pushing up and it goes through these holes and into this chamber here so in a sense we can forget that right we know what happens when you go to squish the suspension you are acting against the spring right you are trying to compress this spring and to control the rate at which that spring compresses we use damping right and it also works the other way when the spring pushes back out instead of going through this this whole oscillation the energy that would make just say a weight a mass on a spring bounce around and keep on oscillating backwards and forwards right that energy is used to move this fluid around right to squish it through this passage and down into here and all the rest of it and then into this region so what is the whole point in all of this well what can happen is and it's a shame i can't show you really oh you can but nah. I don't want to say I can and then it all go disastrously wrong. But I could get a, like a coloured fluid. And what you do is when you pull it through really quickly, right, which if you go that way and if you go that way, eh, you know what I mean, your compression and then you're expanding. But what happens is, is that if you go buff, right, so you hit a bump and you can press really fast, right, that's fine. It's when you try and force a fluid like the oil, extra oil through here into here what can happen is is that the velocity and this is why this is badly designed but the velocity can outrun um sorry the inertia can basically create vo vo volumes because of pressure and it can outrun itself right that's for compression which is really really rare you get basically cavitation because you're trying to force something into a volume quicker than it can handle what's more important is when the spring pushes it back right so we've squeezed our oil through here but then when the spring pushes it back because there's nothing stopping this we half fill this with oil but then there's nothing right we've just pulled a vacuum we've just gone like that and we've gone well this leaks but we're pulling a bit of a vacuum before we pull the rest of the oil through and that's cavitation right and that'll just destroy your oil over time. The oil molecules are steaming up again. You've got to be kidding me. So the long chain molecules are long chain molecules and their viscosity. So how, how well, how thick it is, right? How thick it is, you go, oh, this is quite stiff suspension, right? It's quite good. But what happens is, is that these molecules will with cavitation be broken right 
these bubbles of nothing expand and then the oil collapses and when it collapses there's an awful lot of energy and we're talking microscopically but for atoms and molecules it's like crashing um imagine molecules are like fluorescent light tubes and you crash them together they just snap and shatter into bits what happens is, is the oil molecules which are nice and long and spongy and don't like to cl clash together and stuff like that that um, give the oil its viscosity that it has when it's new what happens over time is it starts to break down so the oil gets thinner and thinner and thinner which means that its damping properties you know instead of being like this or instead of being like this the oil gets that thin it becomes oh right so your suspension becomes saggy it becomes really bouncy and horrible the damping effect is disappearing right so to try and aid in that, because you're going through this little tiny... Because this is the problem. When you have a little tiny orifice like this, without any kind of valving or balancing, and expensive shocks have all this valve bypass gates and all the rest of it, and it's a shame I don't have one to show you that's cut in half, what happens is, is that when the spring pushes back down, creates a volume, you know, when this rod, this piston, just like you... What is it when this goes down like this when it when the rod goes down because the spring the oil cannot get through this chamber quick enough right so to help deal with that you'd like the oil under more pressure than just the compression right you'd like this oil in here to be pressurized so how do you do that well you make this bladder right this is a bladder with a valve in it. You pump this with air. As the oil squirts in, it can collapse and compress this bladder, right? Because you're under the in the instant force, the bang. Look at the fog. You've got to be kidding me. I hate my life. Right. <laughs> Why? Right, it doesn't matter. We're carrying on. It's it's playing silly buggers. It kind of it's well in here right now. It is seventeen degrees. If you can see that Celsius or sixty two, sixty two Fahrenheit. If you can see that, it's not bloody cold. But whatever. It's been an, oh, it's clear. It's clearing up a bit. It's whatever. Right. So cavitation. Yes. I'm, yeah. Right. So. Um, so what you can do is, is to aid in this, is you can pressurise this, that pressurises the oil, so when this does, the spring does push it back, the oil um, has a greater force to force it, oh yeah, it's gone clear, it's all of a sudden gone clear, ah, so it, it, it flows through at a much faster rate. Now, this system only works if one, this has got a pressurised amount of air in it, number two, if you know how much air you can want, pressurise this with the maximum. <laughs> you know, so I've looked online and asked a few people and I've seen a few manuals and none of them tell you anything about pressurising this system whatsoever. None of them. A guy contacted me saying he's just, his, I think it's his brother-in-law, got a new set and he did the Schrader valve and it went, like, like there's nothing in there, probably due to thermal expansion, right? If we heated this up slightly, we could get it to go, it was nothing, right? Um, it's just, <laughs> and number two is this, look at this, this is lovely. So let's talk about the construction. Um, this is what we call master machining. Uh, it's not, it's dirt, right? And you can see, I hope you can see, oh, Master of There we go. So you can see there, there's this weird mark. And it's like, what is that? Oh, that lines up perfectly with... Oh, does that actually... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That lines up perfectly with that drill in there. Look, that cross drill. Oh, oh. Oh, right. So basically... And the weirdest thing is, that is bigger. This bit here is bigger than this. So if I put that screwdriver in like so... You can see there, oh, can you see there? You can see that it's wider than, right, but it's bang on there. So what this is, <laughs> this is the shank of the drill, right? Or even the chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, my screwdriver got overly excited. 
Right. We'll pick that up because I'll use that. Um, so this is just, it's god horrible. Uh, put it in the bandsaw, it hasn't cut it perfectly down the middle, but I've done the, not the worst job ever um, trying to find the middle. And I literally just cut the spring off with the grinder and then just stuck the whole thing in. And just, well, I took this out first. You can see the claw marks because uh, it is nicely stuck. Um, but you've got this drill in here and then this will be drilled from this side. And as you can see, it's just, just, just pristine. Just pristine marksmanship. There's also a flat here. So I think there's been, there's been an end mill in there to create a flat so that then the drill bit wouldn't skid around and it would actually... Because, look, you're getting really thin here. You're getting really... It's not going to breach. I wouldn't worry about it breaching. It's just... And this it begs the question, right? Begs the question. Are you going to put a valve on this at some point? Because, no, no, we don't have a valve. It, it's just nothing, right? It's just crap. What's with this, like, reduced section ribbed bit here? Was this for something else? It looks like it might have been, but nah, it, we're just not going to bother. Um, this is all chewy, chewy, lovely, and I know it's internal, but it's not that internal. It's not very that far. Just, 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 uh, gash. This is um, boring bar gash. And the thing is, some of these surfaces aren't that bad, and you think, oh, well, you can do it when you try. It's just been rushed. So the way this works is that there's a seal that the saw it went to the saw heaven. Um, and what you have is you have this balloon, right, which I cut with a scalpel. The balloon sits in there, and it's actually the pressure of the oil and the air that makes this, get rid of that, that makes this sit against this wall. So there is a circlip, a bit of a circlip you can see just in there. That rams against there like that. Um, and then holds it tight then you screw this whole thing on so it's the pressure that's pushing that pushes this section down and that pushes against that circuit which traps this rubber balloon bit in there this is not uh, an ifp so an internal floating piston so other shocks right better made shocks what they have is you'd see something like this right where they'd have this at the bottom and then they'd have something in the middle, kind of looks-ish like this. And it'd have an O-ring on it, and it basically is a piston, right? And this is an internal floating piston. What you have is you have gas, you have nitrogen down here, and then you'll have your your, your um, oil up there. And what happens is, is when the, the oil is compressed and comes into here, it pushes the piston down against the oil, right? And then vice versa. When the pressure is lower on the oil side, the gas that is now compressed will push against the, what is it? Now, they use nitrogen just because um, it's stable and the way it reacts to temperature variations is uh, very well understood and known and predictable and so on and so forth. It doesn't, like to, it doesn't leak as much as nitrogen either. It doesn't get as excited um, does good old nitrogen. And it, it's pretty much in there. And electrically as well. Um, if you work in the electronic industry, you will know that you... Uh, if you have air guns to bl like air dusters to blow stuff down, a lot of the time you have a supply of nitrogen gas instead of oxygen and all sorts, so you reduce the amount of static buildup and discharge and so on and so on. Not that it's that important in this, it's just, there you go, there's a tidbit for you. Um, the threads and stuff seem fine, the seals were just oh, squared off old rings. Um, you know, this is covered in crap because you put it in a saw and it gets covered in crap. But it's the most very basic. But I am surprised that this thing even exists inside of this. Without having any instructions, without having any valve to control this in any way, um, you just hope to death, you hope to God that you put 14.6 PSI in there or 10.8 or whatever because no one bloody knows because you'd have to test it out. It's a trial and error thing. And... With muddy back suspension, eh, like you're going to know anyway. You know what I mean? So you put X amount of PSI in this one. Hopefully, to God, you put X amount of PSI in that one. And the arm, you've got a gauge that's very, very accurate. You know, because as soon as you pull your valve off, it pisses a bit out anyway. It's like, oh, what am I left with in there? You put a gauge on it. Oh, it, you see what I mean? A lot of pissing about. Um, this is why 
you do it in uh, factories because they've got calibrated machines. And someone did ask me about um, sealed systems and how they fill some of these sealed systems with nitrogen, right? Because they have a similar system like this where you put it all together and you c the, the, it's the gas pressure that's keeping everything tight, right? And how do they get the gas in? Well, what they do is, it's quite clever really, is that they have two options, but there's a main one really. And what you do is, is you put, li you put liquid nitrogen in, right? And you pressurise the atmosphere outside of that to be higher. So in, in other words, what happens is, is instead of having this force out, it goes slack because the pressure outside in this chamber, and it's just a cylinder, right? You put it in, you charge it, you, you just press a button and it goes through the sequence. But what it does is, is that pressure would push this out and seal it. But if the pressure outside is liquid nitrogen and it'll just push past it like that, the seal leaks, it fills the cavity, right? And then what happens, you'd have a bleed valve, if you have a bleed valve, but these are sealed systems. And then what happens is, is when you lower the pressure again, the liquid nitrogen here, it's only a bit, right? Turns to gas and forces against these things, sealing them closed. And you're like, how do they ever get in there to do that? There's no valve in, there's no way to get into this sealed system. How do you get the gas in there? They don't, they use liquids and they basically have... Hi, you just use pressure differentials. It's really quite cool and interesting. Um, or an interesting way to do it if you never knew how to do seal systems. But that's how they do them. A guy asked me. There you go. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, what this does, this balloon in here, you're meant to pump this up. Um, so, if your suspension... And this is the thing, right? It's all nonsense. Because you won't really be able to... It's to reduce cavitation. And one of the problems with suspension, and this is one of the problems that a lot of these explanation videos or articles and stuff, they fail to get across to a degree. And that's why we're going to mess around with this and some springs and just show basic issues with suspension. Because I think that's the best way, is we'll do some Dave and Jeff videos about we'll explore from ground zero with some springs and we'll just look at what happens and oh let's add this to solve that problem and we'll get from this very very simple setup to a very very complicated setup with all these bypass valves and pressure regulation and all the rest of it but basically you're not going to in a sense feel the cavitation right the spring overpowers everything in this system right what the oil side, all this nonsense, all it does is regulate your damping effect, right? Now, that is bollocks, what I've just said then, right? And the reason why is because all of it is, it, like I say, this is the problem. It's all so interwoven that it, you can't just separate stuff out like that. And that's what suspension companies try to do, right? And God, you know, save the Queen, God help them. They do try what I mean is this, right, is that just say you've got this system, right, if you just fill this with air, like this, right, and just say I've got a, a balloon and it's pressurised and atmospheric pressure pushes it back, if I just do this, right, if I could just do this, this is a type of suspension, right, it, it's a one trick suspension, but that is a type of... Well, people know about like buses and trucks and stuff have air suspension well there's a bit of a difference there there's air suspension and then there's using air as your working fluid and so on and so forth but the fact of the matter is right air brakes and stuff like that you can just use compressed air as a kind of spring right if this was perfectly sealed you compress it and it pushes back out again oh, I had another I had a little syringe aha the gel coat weirdly enough let's hope this is a bit better <laughs> so this is a bit more sealed yeah so you see there right that is a type of suspension just using air right and we you know we can even measure the stroke on this right so it just sits 10 we'll start 10 we we'll give it some compression to 2, and it pushes back out pretty much to 10. 
probably got a bit of leakage somewhere but that is a spring and if you look it's not oscillating it's not bouncing around right so this system you know you'll say oh the spring does the suspension the oil does the damping isn't quite true because the um the oil that you're displacing acts kind of like a spring to be quite in a way because it regulates how something is being compressed and then the flow back does the same thing so it's like a slow spring you could call the oil reservoir any air in the system like in this bladder in this thing well it's like this it's it's like this you know it's like the air gap above your oil in your forks it is an air spring right and this is the problem is that there are so many little nuanced things and the more complicated you make the system with all these springs and return gates and valves and bypasses and all this malarkey and these floating pistons and what gases you use and what viscosities and dual viscosity, dual, what is it? I can't remember what it is now. It's dual circumference cylinder rates. When you add all this stuff into some of this really complicated suspension stuff and then you start talking about pivots and leverage and all the rest of it, right? levers and pivots and fulcrums and all this kind of nonsense it gets really complicated so the way i'm going to go around it is we're going to start with this will be our oil damper but we could even connect this to this right so when you compress this you can see how much this juts out and just say that's our damping and we can put different fluids in and so on and so on and so on and so on it gets really complicated and people just say well it's just two clicks <laughs> or whatever right um I understand the jokes and you know stuff like that but the fact of the matter is is suspension is actually very very difficult and we haven't even talked about unsprung and sprung mass we haven't talked about the oscillation dynamics of a moving body right we haven't talked about what actually happens to the bikes we haven't talked about the pressure in tires and the deformation of tires and how that is a type of suspension right and even stuff like i don't know um pneumatic trail just for just to throw something under the bus that's absolutely horrible and should be ignored by everyone on earth <laughs> you know what i mean um but you know it there's loads of things to this getting back to this right it's useless this 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 setup here is useless. They're wasting the time, right? Um, they're just wasting the time because you have no control apart from how much air pressure you put in here. No one's done any of the testing. No one knows the damping rate, right? Nothing. Nothing's known. So, is this better? Someone might say, yeah, but like Craig, for instance. Craig showed me he had one that he chopped in half, and there's nothing in it. Just either empty or just full of bollocks like it was just solid it just looked like it was cool the fact of the matter is which one's better the one that looks cool or this neither right they're just both as bad as each other this is just a waste of they'll probably charge you a bit more for this which means you're just wasting your money on something that doesn't really do anything um i am going to try and get some other ones like i got that um kyb shock We'll try and get some better shocks. And actually, that's a good point, actually. If anyone has shocks from the OEM ones that they've just got in the shed, right? Like this. It's just sat there and you're like, oh my God, it's just, I'm not going to do anything with it ever. Send me a message, Facebook, or send me a comment and then I'll give you the Facebook link. Links are in the description. I'd just like a spread. So if we could get something like an R1, and uh, OEM ones, an R1 one, and then uh, an ER6, just say, and then a, I don't know, a BMW something and a Honda. Not ancient stuff. Let's just say 2000s onwards. Or maybe even a Bandit one, maybe. Um, and then what we'll do is the OEM ones, the, 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 the more frequent the bike has, the better. So if everyone's got a street triple one, the OEM one that they don't want anymore, they want to discard because I'm going to chop it up. So just be one that I will chop it up, and you won't. If you want the pieces back, you can have the pieces back. Um, but yeah, this it, this is pointless. It's badly done, right? There's no valving. There's no instructions. There's no nothing, right? There's no way to regulate 
how any of this works. Um, you will notice on all ins ones and stuff like that that they're going away from this and having the shock body and then having a banjo, right? Uh, you know, a, a, a brake line, basically. It's all hydraulic, so they'll have a brake line going from here. One, because you can move it around if you want, but number two is... Um, it mean you'd have to do all this cross drilling crap, right? It's a lot easier. It's a lot cheaper. All they do is just make a cartridge, pop a hole in it, a thread. Same thing with this, just like you would a brake system. Um, and people were saying stuff like, oh, it matters which way these go upside down. And it doesn't, or it shouldn't. If you have a shock with a piggyback on it, and it matters what the orientation is, then you've got a really, really, really poorly designed shock. Because these two, as you can see, they go to great extents to separate the oil section from the air section. This is a massive rubber johnny, and it has a good 12 mil of a compression fitting against there. It's even got a lip, right? So it, as you can see on here, this has got a lip on there that sits on this face here. And the, these bite marks are when the, the saw, it, when you cut these things apart, they explode and it bit it. <laughs> But, you know, that has got a double lip on there. You can see this is ribbed for her pleasure. And ribbed for his pleasure, but not half as much as hers. So, eh, equality. Don't believe it. But, um, you know, that sits on there. And then this is jammed against, using the pressure of the oil and whatnot, against there. And then this lip, this outside lip, rams against that clip there. And that holds it into place. Right? All is laughing. All is good. It's quite a substantial seal if you are leaking because you turn this this way or this way you've got something seriously wrong <laughs> seriously wrong with your, with your setup and the ones that have pistons have even better seals so i don't believe it the weirdest thing is and i did find weird was the fact that they coated the inside of this they anodized the inside of this this has no piston right they just anodized the inside of this probably because it was. You might say, well, it's to stop it being so porous, but I don't really believe that um, because there are bits that are exposed to oil uh, or the gas. Just say, um, no, that's ah, that's all anodized. I, I still don't believe it, but um, as you can see, that this bit's exposed, so I don't believe that as an argument. Just say for oil wise, saying that it's porous or something. Uh, it's just cheap rubbish. Right? It's just get this out as quick as possible someone probably designed this a long 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 time ago and they just keep on either robbing it or robbing the idea or selling the idea for a couple of grand to each other and just keep on producing the same rubbish um, there's a ring locking ring in the bottom with a screw the only thing i will say that's good is that the shaft on the end you can hardly see it the shaft on the end there is staked with a nut on um but apart from that, yeah, you know, I'd love to take that out, but I ain't getting that nut off any time this century. Because um, even that nut, it's, it, it won't give me enough purchase to get on there. Cause they've staked the shaft. They've staked the shaft onto the end of the nut in three points, so I ain't getting that off there without really fucking something. And it wouldn't matter. You just get to see the shitty seal they've got in there. Um, yeah, well... It's, I'll eat my hat because I said there'll probably be nothing. I, I bet, I don't know, I think it was a lifetime supply of milky bars or something. I bet that this was empty, it had nothing in it. I was totally wrong. Uh, just to re reiterate that, I was wrong. There is stuff in here. It's not useful, but there is stuff in here, right? You chuck a jelly baby in there, it's probably just as useful. Take your Johnny out, chuck that away, put some jelly babies in there, and it's probably just about exactly the same. You probably won't notice any difference whatsoever. Um... Yeah, hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.